briefly about open access publishing and why I think this is an important area for doctoral students uh, to be aware of. Uh, so next slide, please. So just for those of you who may not know, um, the open access movement emerged as a response to the traditional model of academic publishing, which often restricts access to research behind paywalls and subscription fees. Um, and I've provided a link here to, to um, Paywall is a really great documentary um, about uh, the problems that in academic publishing and uh, the issues around open access publishing um, and the link is in the slide there. So publishing open access, on the other hand, seeks to make research freely available either immediately on publication or shortly after, enabling widespread access um, across the globe and to those outside academia too. It means that research publications are immediately available to anyone with internet, with internet access. It also means that authors can retain copyright in their work and open access publications use Creative Commons licenses, which also allow for greater reuse. Uh, so next slide, please. Over the last 10 to 15 years, there has been an increasing focus on open access at all levels. So governments, international organisations, funders, institutions and scholars too. And there have been various mandates and announcements um, that have meant open publishing is now really high on the agenda. So most recently, uh, UKRI has announced that all book publications, as well as all journal articles that stem from research it has funded, must publish open access um, and I've provided a link to the new UKRI policy, uh, a blog about the new UKRI policy in this slide. And the next REF is expected to follow suit uh, with its own expanded open access policy to that will include both books and journals. Um, and at a governmental le level, in May, the European Council called for all member states to um, support open access publishing for the publishing of research that involves public funds. And the UN Sustainable Development Goals also indicate their support for open access to research and see it, um, uh, in fact, it's included in one of the um, SDGs and they see it as essential in being able to address the challenges set out in the goals. But I don't think you should just think of open access as something mandated that researchers have to comply with. Um, there are real benefits too. Uh, next slide, please. So research has shown that publishing open access leads to um, greater usage of publications, including greater geographical diversity of usage, particularly in low and middle income countries. Research has also shown that publishing open access leads to increased citations compared to non open access publications and also a greater diversity of citation sources um, by institution, countries, regions and also by fields of research, suggesting that it's a particularly beneficial model for publishing interdisciplinary research. Open access publications also get shared more often and get more attention than subscription based content and reports have shown that open access publications are reaching a substantial number of user groups outside academia too and there's clear evidence for wider public use of open access research compared with closed research. It's also been argued that open access enhances transparency in allowing, allowing for greater scrutiny, verification, uh, verification and reproducibility of scientific results and can be used to address problems of misinformation and fake news. So for those of you who are looking to a career in academia in order to make a difference, I would say that open access publishing can help you in achieving that. Uh, next slide, please. Do be aware, though, that there are different types of open access publishing. So the approach that currently dominates um, the publishing industry is one where there are article or book processing charges that the author must pay in order to make their work available open access. Um, and they can find that funding through um, either through research grants um, or via perhaps via departmental funding. But these fees can be high 
Um, so for books, the fees kind of range from about six thousand to eleven thousand um, pounds. For journal articles, that can range from as little as around three hundred pounds um, up to the highest I've seen, which is um, the uh, journal Nature, which charges eleven thousand pounds to publish a single article. Um, so if you don't have access to funding to pay for these fees, you just you aren't able to publish open access. Um, and increasingly, it's being recognised that this model just exacerbates inequalities within the publishing system and includes those without access to uh, research funding grants, based in poorer research institutions. Um, it tends to put those working in arts, humanities and social sciences at a disadvantage and, of course, those in the global south too. So there's an emerging um, model uh, where there are no author facing fees, you'll be pleased to hear, and that's called Diamond Open Access. And that's the model um, that the new open access publishers like University of Westminster Press are adopting. And it's viewed as a more equitable and ethical approach to open access. Um, and I've included some links in the slide at the end here um, to help you find publishers that don't charge fees. I'm just going to hand over to Nina now too, to who's going to talk about how Westminster can support you in publishing your work, Open Access. Thanks, Philippa. Uh, sorry, bear with me. I think I accidentally <laughs> clicked something and clicked out of it. Uh, we'll, we'll, cut that we out of, we'll cut that out of the recording. <laughs> uh, is it? Hang on. Can I show, is this showing full screen for everyone? I can. Let me just see if I can make that full screen again. Um, okay, I'll just quickly draw through to the right slide. Okay, yeah, thanks. So I'm just going to quickly mention if you are publishing articles, we've already heard that um, one of you is and maybe others will consider it as a member of um, uh, as a student at the University of Westminster. We do have options for you to publish open access. As Philippa mentioned, there's the diamond publishers you can look at who won't charge. They're open to you at any point. Um, but at the university, we have something called green open access. And this is where an article is published in the normal way. So the publisher charges most people to read it. But we're able to make the author manuscript. So that's the version after any changes based on peer review. But before it was um, turned into the final PDF available, you add it um, to the VRE as an output. Um, and then I check it, um, make sure it's OK, you know, add any cover sheet or any wording the um, publisher requires. Sometimes the makers put an embargo on it for a few months before we can make it open. And then it goes live in our repository, Westminster Research. So for people who don't have access to the paid content, they can still see a version of the research and hopefully benefit from it. Um, and then the other options we have here, which are open to doctoral researchers as well as staff, uh, gold open access. So that's what would normally be paid with the um, APCs, as Philippa mentioned. But we have some what are called read and publish deals. So we used to pay subscriptions to these publishers just to read their content. And now these ones um, that are listed here. So there's Cambridge University Press, Elsevier, Sage, Springer, depending on your discipline, some will be more relevant than others. Um, you can publish your article openly with them in a lot of their journals. Um, do look at the blog post link, which I'm coming just uh, previewed a minute ago, um, and you can find the details for each publisher of exactly which journals are covered. But if you want to publish an article and it gets accepted, then you can ask for them to publish it under open access immediately and you won't be charged for it. So it's quite useful and it doesn't charge us anymore. So we do encourage anyone to take it up. Um, we have a similar thing with the Public Library of Science, if that applies to you. It's more likely to be in STEM subjects where you don't have to pay the APCs. We just pay one subscription to them every year. Um, I've already mentioned Diamond. And then, yeah, there is the option to pay an APC. Unfortunately, at Westminster, we don't have a fund for doctoral researchers. But if you are co-authoring 
with your supervisor or another academic and they're the lead author, they might be able to apply. We have a very small amount of money we can use to pay those APCs to publishers if we really want that article to be made open. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, just look at the blog post. There's links to all of this and more details. Thanks, Carmen. Oh, so this is just um, uh, a final slide with some useful resources on open access uh, publishing. So thanks very much.